Hi everyone, today I thought I would try and combine two of my favourite things, books and baking. This is partly inspired by Biscuiteers, I am in no way associated with them, this is not sponsored, gifted, none of that, I'm just mentioning them because they deserve credit because they make beautiful biscuits and for the past few years they've always made bookish biscuits of all of the women's prize shortlisted books and I have admired them and I have eaten them and they have been delicious. Um, so I thought I would not do the women's prize shortlisted books today but I would make some biscuits and then try and ice book covers onto them. I should say I have never made biscuits before. I do like baking but I've never made biscuits. I have never iced pre-made biscuits before. I have never done piping before even though I've made cakes I've always just kind of tipped the icing on top and then hoped for the best. So I imagine this is going to be a little bit of a disaster but I thought it could be quite funny and I think that we all deserve a bit of a laugh so please come along and laugh at me while I try and do something. Whatever they look like I'm sure they'll taste good so that's fine. I asked on Instagram which book covers you would like me to attempt to turn into biscuits and there were lots of suggestions and I collated them and then I picked out the ones that were mentioned the most. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven that I'm going to try. I may rope Mr. M into this as well. Um, maybe he can do his own biscuit or we could do a competition where we both try and um, ice the same book. Uh, and see who can do it better. I don't know, we'll see how we get on. So these are the books that you guys picked. You picked Grief is a Thing with Feathers by Max Porter. I thank you for this because it's quite simple. So I may start with this one. I'm sure that lettering is probably gonna be quite difficult as well, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. So I thought I would briefly say what the books are as well because this is a booktube channel. Grief is a Thing with Feathers is one of my favorite books. Max Porter is a genius, this is part novella, poetry, it's about a family where the mother dies and then Grief, who is Ted Hughes's figure crow, comes into their house and he torments them. And it's absolutely heartbreaking. I recorded a podcast with Max, which I'll link in the description box down below. It's brilliant. You also recommended Lullaby by Leila Slamani, um, and I think this is going to be a fun cover to do. This is a literary thriller more of a character study about a nanny who kills two young children. You also picked two books that are high up on my TBR. The first one is Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Everisto. This one is on the Women's Prize shortlist. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get the detail of the people. We might just have to go for blocks of colour. We'll see. We'll see how brave I feel. So this is about 12 women all around the UK um, in different time periods, I think, and how their lives intertwine. Um, yeah, because one of them is in, in 1905 and then going all the way up to 2017. It says, welcome to Britain and 12 very different people, mostly women, mostly black, who call it home. Teeming with life and crackling with energy, girl, woman, other, follows them across the miles and down the years. And the other one that you picked that's on my TBR is In the Dream House by Carmen Maria Machado, which is about her um, past relationship. It is a memoir about a relationship that she was in with another woman and it was a very um, abusive relationship and she's talking about how queer relationships are often seen as a utopia and that's not always the case, obviously. Um, and I've heard, again, nothing but great things. The rest were all books that I have read. We've got Ali Smith's Spring. Uh, a little bit of a challenge considering this is David Hockney, but I will give it a go. Um, Ali Smith's Seasonal Quartet is brilliant. She is one of my favourite authors and she decided to write four books that were inspired by our current political times and she writes them now and they come out pretty much immediately, like within, I think it's about eight weeks of her finishing them, which is unheard of in the publishing world. This is the third one. You don't have to read them in order, but I would recommend starting with Autumn. Um, this is about art and friendship and borders and loss. We also have The Bass Rock by Evie Wilde, which is currently my favourite read of 2020. This is set across three different time periods and it's about um, women and the abuse of power. 
Um, it is about a woman called Sarah in the 1700s who's been accused of witchcraft. It is about Ruth in the 1950s who has just married a man whose wife has recently died and she's adopting his two sons, so her two stepsons. And then um, it is about one of her descendants, Viv, who is clearing out Ruth's house in the present day. It's like Fleabag meets Ali Smith meet Sarah Waters. That's how I've been describing it to people. You also picked The Wolf Border by Sarah Hall. Again, I thank you for this simplistic design. I'm not sure how we're gonna get black for the top, but we'll think about that later. This is about a woman called Rachel who gets a job in the UK rewilding wolves into the Lake District. Again, like with Ali Smith, it's about borders. It is about um, how women are seen as feral and wild if they're not doing the things that men would like them to do. It is a stunning book. You also picked The Heart by Melita Karangal. I love how you picked um, some of my favorite, favorite books. Um, again, thank you. This design, brilliant. May actually start with this one. I think that might be a good idea. This novel is about a young man who dies and his family have to decide whether or not they will consent to the hospital taking his heart and um, offering it up to transplant. So it's about the journey that the family goes on and the journey that the heart goes on. It's really lyrical and it's written with such rhythm to it. Long sentences with lots of commas so that you feel as though it has the rhythm of a beating heart. This was originally in French uh, and translated into English by Sam Taylor. You also picked this. Guys, a person, a person. A few of you picked Poor Things as well by Alistair Gray, which I thought was particularly mean, um, but that didn't get to the top of the list. This is The Tidal Zone by Sarah Moss. You know, this isn't a photograph, this is a painting. People can paint like this. I am not one of those people, and I'm certainly not one of those people who could do it with icing, but I will give it my best shot. This is about a 15 year old girl called Miriam who collapses at school, um, her heart stops, but then she's brought back to life and she's sent home, the hospital don't know why that happened, so they don't know if it might happen again. Uh, and so the family are kind of living in this unknown state um, where they don't know what's gonna happen and they don't know what they can do to prevent the thing that may potentially happen. Um, it's quite anxiety inducing. And then second to last, you picked one of my favorite books ever. This is A Place For Us by Fatima Farheen Mirza. It's about five members of one family, an Indian American Muslim family. They do not speak to each other anymore. Or some of the members of that family do not speak to each other anymore. So we open in the present day and then we zoom back 20 years to find out all of the little things that triggered this falling out. Um, and it is so intricate and so patient and kind. It is so kind. I really want to reread that at some point. And then finally, many, if not most of you, said that I had to also do a biscuit that was the cover of one of my own books. So I looked at them and I've picked this one because I think it's probably the one that I could do the best. And I say best in air quotes. So this is the bookshop book. I did think about doing Franklin, but I thought that that would offend Katie very much if I try to make Franklin out of icing. So I decided to go for the bookshop books. We've got lots of straight lines here and books on a bookcase. Um, so this uh, is one of my nonfiction books, which is about 300 weird and wonderful bookshops all around the world and why bookshops are so great. So bookshops on boats and on buses, bookshops on the backs of camels, the history of books. Um, and yeah, it still makes me smile, even though it has been six years since it was published and seven years since I wrote it. So those are the books that I'm gonna attempt to turn into biscuits. Um, so shall we go into the kitchen and see how I get on? Welcome to the kitchen. I'm gonna make the biscuits, but before I do, just in case you're in North America and you are confused by me saying biscuits and icing, I know that in North America there is a savory biscuit. That is not these. Think cookies. We have cookies too, but we tend to call cookies biscuits with lots of chocolate and they're chunkier. Biscuits tend to be quite flat and plain and you sometimes ice them. So if you're confused, I hope that helps. I've just picked a standard biscuit recipe from BBC Food. Never done it before, so hopefully it will work. Let's time lapse this. I just realized that I'm out of plain flour. So I had a little bit left and I had to top up the recipe with wholemeal bread flour. And I'm really hoping that this doesn't ruin it, but we'll see. I think they'll just be slightly healthier, right? OK, 
okay here we go so here are all of the biscuits now you may be thinking jen these are all very different sizes and you would be right but you know what all books are different sizes and that's a pain when you're trying to arrange your bookcases so i'm just going to say that it's realistic so they have been cooling you may notice that i was only able to make 11 which means that i have the exact same number as biscuits as i do books so if i mess one up that's it so those have completely cooled now and it's time to ice them i have these different color writing icing which i think i can probably use for drawing as well and then i have made icing sugar so from this i've just added some water and then i can keep that white um, and then i can also put some in other containers and add this food coloring here to make lots of different colors as well so um let's see how bad i am at this Okay, so that was much, much harder than I thought it was going to be. Some definitely better than others here. The writing in particular was quite hard. As you may have seen on the time lapse when I did the heart, I didn't realize I should have let the base set. So my drawing just went all over the place. A place for us, I'm really happy with that one. Same with Girl, Woman, Other and Spring and even the Bass Rock actually. I'm very happy with that. Um, they're not perfect, but for a first go, I will take that. I'll take the bookshop book too, that looks okay. Grief, um, that crow though, that crow. Um, I don't know what Max is gonna think of that. I do feel like I need to apologize to Sarah for this representation of the title zone too, but on the whole, on the whole, I'm gonna give myself a pat on the back. Okay, I'm going to show these to Mr. M and I've got one biscuit left here. You'll notice that I didn't do in the dream house because what I thought I would do is I would ask him which one he wants to do himself. Uh, and that may be in the dream house or it may be another one. Um, so let's see what he thinks of these. He hasn't seen these at all. I will say also that using these and doing this icing really hurt my hands. So if you have issues with your hands as well, if you have arthritis, give yourself lots of time for this because it's fun, but... Uh, yeah, it hurt a bit. Okay, let's see what he thinks. Pick it? <laughs> <laughs> you have to say that, you're married to me. No, I think they're pretty good. They're better than you. better than others. <laughs> <laughs> I think the crow is a bit sad. <laughs> the crow is so 
that and that's the tidal zone. Whilst I was decorating these, this has been in the oven, which is my first attempt at wholemeal bread, which I'm very excited about. And now Mr. M is going to turn this biscuit into In the Dream House by Carmen Rey Machado. How are you feeling? Are you feeling optimistic? Um, maybe heartened by that biscuit. How dare you? That is a piece of art. Okay, only marks. Get set. Go. Bake? No? Or yeah, bake? only marks. Get set. Bake. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> I appreciate your effort. It was at this point that Mr M decided he wasn't going to be able to make the biscuit look like the book, so instead he turned it into a Halloween monster. Can you explain your creation to us? I don't know, it's sort of like a cross between... It's like a Halloween biscuit with like a cross between a devil, a snowman, a skeleton, a hamburger and a spider. That's exactly what it is. Okay, there we go. There are my bookish biscuits and then Mr M's uh, attempt at the end then turned into a Halloween biscuit when he didn't think that it was going quite as well as he had hoped. Some of them I think were all right. Some of them, you know, not so great, but it was a fun exercise. I will link all of the books in the description box down below if you're interested, along with the um, biscuit recipe that I used. And I'll also link the icing that I have as well in case that's something that you would like to check out. If there are any booktubers watching this who would also like to have a go and make a video doing this, I would so love to see that. So please do that if you can. It would bring me great joy. I hope that you have all enjoyed this video. I certainly enjoyed filming it. Um, and I will speak to you all very soon. Lots of bookish love. Bye.